We're going to terraform two of the most massive planets in our solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, and make them habitable for life. We're talking about transforming these gas giants into rocky, livable worlds, and I'm here to walk you through the entire process. Before we get started, let's set the stage. Normally, terraforming is a process we might consider for smaller planets or moons, like Mars or Europa. But today, we're thinking bigger, much bigger. Jupiter and Saturn are behemoths of our solar system, with massive atmospheres primarily composed of hydrogen and helium. But what if we could strip those gases away, change their composition, and create conditions suitable for life? The first step in our terraforming process was to tackle the sheer size and mass of Jupiter and Saturn. Both of these giants have masses that are beyond comprehension, over 300 times that of Earth in Jupiter's case. But here's the trick. By decreasing their mass while keeping their radius the same, we can bring these planets closer to the density and gravity that's more Earth-like. So why reduce the mass? Well, with less mass but the same size, we lower the surface gravity to a more manageable level. If we kept their original mass, any attempts at habitation would be crushed by the overwhelming gravity. Now let's move on to the composition. Jupiter and Saturn are mostly made up of hydrogen and helium, elements that won't do much for building a solid surface or sustaining life as we know it. We gradually reduced the hydrogen and helium percentage to zero. Instead, we added iron and silicate elements crucial for forming a rocky, barren planet. With rocky surfaces established, the next critical step was to create the right environment for life. First, we added water, oxygen, nitrogen, and other trace gases to these planets. This cocktail of elements is essential for creating an atmosphere similar to Earth's, where life can flourish. But what about the temperature? Jupiter and Saturn are located far from the sun, meaning they're naturally frigid. To combat this, I increased the surface heat capacity to very high levels. This ensured that the planets could retain enough heat, preventing temperatures from plummeting into the negatives. This step allowed us to terraform these planets without relying on a nearby star or sun to provide warmth, a key innovation in this virtual terraforming process. As the temperature stabilized, I began to slowly increase the surface pressure and gave the planets a dense atmosphere. And then, something magical happened. Green vegetation started to appear. It was as if life was springing up from the barren ground, a sight that was both thrilling and surreal. Soon after, city lights began to twinkle on the dark sides of both Jupiter and Saturn, signaling the birth of civilization on these once inhospitable worlds. Now, let's talk about the differences in terraforming Jupiter and Saturn. While the process was similar, the outcomes had unique characteristics due to the distinct properties of each planet. For Jupiter, the challenge was its sheer size and its stronger gravitational field. Even after reducing its mass, the surface gravity was still slightly higher than Earth's, which meant life would have to adapt to slightly higher gravity conditions. The atmosphere on terraform Jupiter turned out to be thick and dense, with vast expanses of dark, fertile lands covered in vegetation the city lights on Jupiter glowed more intensely, likely due to a more concentrated population or advanced technology. On the other hand, Saturn, being a bit smaller and less massive than Jupiter, had a slightly lighter gravity even after the transformation. The atmosphere on Saturn became more temperate and balanced, with vast areas of green forests and deep blue lakes. After successfully making Jupiter and Saturn habitable, I decided to take things to the next level. I added tiny artificial satellites around both planets and then gave them magnificent rings. These rings were not just for show. They added a whole new dimension to the planet's aesthetics. And then, the ultimate experiment. I let these two newly terraformed worlds collide. The resulting cataclysmic collision was beyond anything we could imagine.
both planets, resulting in a superheated mass with a temperature soaring to around 30,000 degrees Celsius. Fast forwarding time, we watched as the temperature slowly decreased and a new planet began to form. To our astonishment, this fused planet, despite the violent collision and extreme temperatures, somehow remained habitable. The atmosphere was dense, but as we reduced its density, we witnessed something extraordinary. The lands of this new world had turned dark, but there were still patches of green vegetation and city lights shining through the darkness. It was as if life, against all odds, had found a way to survive and adapt.